Hello there, my fellow brave guardsmen, and welcome to another episode of Warhammer 40k lore. You already know this, since you clicked on the video title, but indeed your eyes do not deceive you. I have returned in force to what is probably the most viewed topic from my videos in general, aka the Imperial Guard. Or, if you wanna be a hipster, the Astra Militarum. Like I mentioned in my channel status video at the beginning of the month, I have decided to start covering individual Imperial Guard regiments. This will be a big series, since I intend to eventually cover all the famous regiments, like the Cadians, the Mordians, the Talarn, the Vostroyans, the Catacans, etc. And for each one, I will do a number of videos, depending on how much lore is available. Rest assured though, as I will cover the aspects of each one as best I can. That being said, today I will be a bit selfish and start with one of my personal favorites in the form of the Talarn Desert Raiders. In today's episode, I will tell you a bit about their history and organization. Then in future ones, I will talk to you about their unique war gear and famous members of their regiments both individuals and units. I am your host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without any more muss and fuss, let us see who the Talarn are, shall we? The Talarn Desert Raiders is the name given to those Imperial Guard regiments raised from the desert world of Talarn who are highly skilled at desert and mobile armored warfare. The Desert Raiders are mobile guerrilla fighters, evasive and opportunistic. They are especially known for their lightning-quick sentinel and hard-hitting tank squadrons and are masters of hit-and-run tactics. They love to strike a killing blow at the heart of the enemy formation before returning to their line, prepared to pounce once again. The people of Talarn are extremely resourceful and pragmatic. They are patient, determined and utterly ferocious in pursuit of their enemy. Talarn are all accomplished riders and will often use riding mounts to move from battle to battle, dismounting only when they are close to the enemy and wish to employ stealth. Once the enemy is sighted, the Talarn will stalk them closely, relying on their practiced marksmanship and lightning-quick curved combat knives to achieve victory. And since I consider it important to understanding these people, I would like to tell you how Talarn ended up a desert planet in the first place. The world of Talarn was once a verdant agri-world, when it was first discovered by human settlers in the Segmentum Tempestus during the 29th millennium. During the 31st millennium, Talarn was still a fertile planet, bathed in the gentle orange light of its twin suns. The surface of this lush planet was covered in oceans, grassy plains and jungles, and its people prospered but this all came to a brutal end during the dark days of the Horus Heresy. As the Heresy raged across the galaxy, the traitor space marines of the Iron Warriors Legion struck the planet in a devastating surprise attack. Thousands of virus bombs rained down on the planet and the people ran to their enviro shelters deep beneath the surface. As they hid, safe from the devastating bio-infestation, the deadly coils of the Life Eater virus DNA mutated, as they were programmed to do. Animals, plants, even insects died as the virus did its work, destroying the planet's ecosystem and leaving an empty shell devoid of life. After seven weeks of isolation, the virus had run its course, and the remaining people of Talarn emerged upon the surface. They found a world covered with the acrid slime of plants and corpses not yet decayed, for the world was completely sterile, without even bacteria to aid in the decomposition of the dead. The stench was strong, and more than one person died from it alone. As the Iron Warriors had sent their task force down, from the underground bunkers, the Talarn forces came out to do battle with the invader. Soon, reinforcements from both the traitors and the Imperium arrived, rival Starfleets bringing vast armies to fight over the worthless remnants of a dead planet. 
The Battle of Talarn raged for many months and was the largest armored conflict in Imperial history. Outbreaks of viral infection from isolated surviving pockets of the Life Eater virus made it almost impossible for infantry to operate outside the protective shelters of their vehicles. The battle was finally decided by the armies of these tanks, more than 10 million of them participating in the battle. The Desert Raiders rarely met the chaotic invaders in open battle, preferring to strike from the flanks and avoid the strongest elements of the traitor's battle line. When the fighting finally ended in a victory for the loyalists of the Imperium, the empty, putrid waste of Talarn was littered with the wreckage of more than a million shattered vehicles. To this day, the Desert Raiders have a well-deserved reputation as masters of armored warfare and their tank crews are among the most feared in the galaxy. The forces of Chaos were driven from Talarn at a great cost, yet for all the millions who died there, the planet was rendered useless for large-scale habitation, industry or agriculture. The armies of the Imperium might well have given up Talarn for dead, had their commanders realized the extent of the devastation. But once the armies were set in motion, there was no going back. At the time, the chaotic attack on the agri-world made little sense. It seemed insane that even the Chaos Gods should expend such energy fighting over a devastated world of no particular importance. But in the aftermath of the Horus Heresy, there weren't many left to ponder such questions. Among the evils of the time, it was just another demonstration of the random destructiveness of chaos. None realized that the traitor legions had been in pursuit of the Curses of Algaron, a potent chaotic artifact buried deep beneath the surface of the planet that was left over from the time of the Eldar. Talarn would eventually pay a high price for unwittingly housing this artifact when the forces of Chaos returned millennia later to finish what they had begun in a great conflict called the Curses War. Within a thousand years of the Horus Heresy's end, Talarn evolved into a very different world from the prosperous agricultural planet of former times. Deserts of sulfurous sand stretched from pole to pole, and all water disappeared except for a thin residue that remained in the atmosphere. No vegetation remained on the surface of the planet. All that grew was the carefully husbanded crops of the Talarn themselves, sheltered in their protective horticular domes deep beneath the planet's surface. The surviving Talarn now lived in domed towns, or in natural caverns hollowed out in the planet's rock. Fierce winds drove the Talarn into their shelters. Corrosive sulfur storms made all travel across the planet risky, and eventually a system of tunnels for tram systems and pedestrian traffic was built to facilitate travel beneath the communities that lay below the surface. Above their settlements, the Talarn built hydrological vapor traps to catch water from the thin atmosphere. These tall towers still stand above their domes to this day, and all the water the Talarn need is caught by these cunning devices and channeled into subterranean holding tanks. They expanded their subterranean homes with tunnels, caverns, and surface domes, where the population was protected from the deadly sandstorms and extreme conditions. Approximately 20 standard years after the Battle of Talarn ended, the first Talarn Desert Raider regiments of the Imperial Guard were formed. These regiments specialized in desert fighting and were highly adept at ambushing enemy forces in the sandy wastes of their desert world or any other. With little effort on their part, Talarn can reasonably give only soldiers to the Imperium's tithe collectors, and they do so with pride. The desert raiders are organized like most Imperial Guard regiments employing combined arms tactics that make use of infantry, artillery, and armored companies. Due to their predilection for moving swiftly and striking suddenly and quickly, the most common Talarn regiments are infantry. They are also known for including one or more patrol companies referred to as long-range reconnaissance or more simply as recon companies. 
the Desert Raiders also employ specialized Rough Rider squadrons that make use of the alien mounts known locally on Talarn as the Mukali. These mounts originate from the deserts of the Imperial world of Goru Prime, but have since been imported to other Imperial desert worlds such as Talarn. They also utilized armored companies, all of which focus on some particular element of the favored strategies of the Talarn – stealth, swiftness, and the killing blow. Many Talarn forces also have come to appreciate the utility of the Sentinel Walker due to its effectiveness as a means of crossing even rough terrain swiftly without sacrificing firepower. The basic Talarn Desert Riders tactical unit is the 10-man infantry squad. Squads are led by a Talarn sergeant, and usually one Talarn guardsman is equipped with a plasma gun. Two Talarn guardsmen can form a heavy weapons team armed with a missile launcher. The Talarn Captain and Lieutenant To command a company or platoon of Talarn Desert Raiders requires grit, determination, and expertise. To command the respect of the men of Talarn, an officer must be an expert rider, a consummate swordsman, a skilled marksman, and above all, a fearless warrior. Almost without exception, Talarn regimental officers are fully prepared or even eager to confront danger alongside their men. Whether this means charging headlong into battle or infiltrating behind enemy lines. The equipment used by these Talarn officers reflects the skill of Talarn's artisans, from elaborately carved breastplates to gold inlaid sword blades and decorated silken capes. The Talarn Sergeant The Talarn Desert Raiders often undertake daring hit and run missions, requiring them to operate behind enemy lines or otherwise far from support. For this reason, the Talarn sergeants who command Talarn squads are known for being particularly decisive and adept at operating independently of higher command. While this trait is valued by most Talarn commanders, it is known to sometimes cause friction between Talarn squads and Imperial Guard forces from different regiments. The Talarn Guardsmen the Desert Raiders are also known for their successful use of guerrilla tactics and their capacity to operate effectively in inhospitable environments. Matching the ambushes and surprise assaults of enemy forces with hit-and-run attacks of their own, the Talarn always prove themselves invaluable to the Imperial war effort. The Talarn favor close engagements, especially when operating in poor visibility on a planet's surface or shifting subterranean tunnels. And finally, the Talarn Rough Rider. The Talarn regiments are famous for their rough riders, and rightfully so. The hit and run tactics employed by the Talarn Desert Raiders are perfectly suited to the use of living mounts. Living steeds are often much more difficult for enemies to detect from afar than vehicles, allowing the raiders to close in on their enemies without being detected. As in the case with the rough riders of other regiments, the Talarn wield fierce hunting lances, long pole arms tipped with explosive charges effective against even the toughest target. Although the explosive tip is good only for a single attack, the Rough Rider's charge is often enough to break the enemy line. Most Talarn guardsmen often prefer to ride their own mounts, known as Mukali, whenever possible. These huge creatures, although not native to Talarn, are perfectly adapted to the arid environments of other worlds. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Talarn, their history, and a bit of their organization for today. Would you enjoy being part of a Talarn regiment? Sure, the planet is a hellhole, but the people are brave and their culture is unique. Let me know in the comments below. If you found this video to be entertaining or informative, please click the like button and maybe subscribe for future videos. And if you'd like to support my channel more directly, please go check my Patreon page. The link is in the video description, where even a couple of dollars a month can help out. Thank you kindly for watching, and have a peaceful day. The Emperor Protects.